Alexi Barnett Jr. versus Daniel Alvarez. And you can see here, Sean, everything very similar, except for the weight. Alvarez, four pounds, so heavy right there. We've already talked about the reasons for that. That's why this is a non-title fight. A huge opportunity for Alvarez. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the main event. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Presented to you by Lions Not Sheep Apparel. Sanctioned by the Virginia Boxing, Martial Arts, and Professional Wrestling Advisory Board. Executive Director Kathleen Nosbish. Board Administrator Bill Clancy. Program Coordinator Vernon Porter. The three judges scoring our main event. Brian Costello, Lisa Cuellar, Ronald Rodriguez. And the third man inside the squared circle, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Andrew Glenn. And now, with our bare knuckle fans watching live worldwide on the BKFC app for the first time in Virginia State history, from the Scope Arena, fight fans of Norfolk! It's time! to knock off! Ah! Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black and green. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. His official weight, an even 139 pounds. His pro boxing record stands undefeated at 8-0. His MMA record stands undefeated at 4-0. And his BKFC record stands undefeated at 1-0. From Imperial Valley, California, here is Daniel. Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears red, white, and blue. He stands five feet six inches tall. His official weight, an even 135 pounds. Tonight, his bare knuckle record stands at eight victories, opposite two defeats, and steps into the squared circle for a record breaking 11th time. He is the current BKFC. Champion representing and fighting out of the 757, Reggie E.C. Barnett Jr. Daniel Alvarez told us Reggie Barnett a straight pressure fighter, I have to give back even heavier pressure. Both fighters at the scratch. Our main event, the number one. Red Light Blue Trucks, Reggie in the clinch. Daniel Alvarez in the Black Trucks, he's the takedown right back to it. And this is just like Reggie said, he wants to bully him in the first round, tie him up, whoever has to do it. Just like you and his chops out. Heavy clinch again. Double underhooks to Barnett.
dumped him up. He just dumped him. All right, stay right here for me. I'm gonna take a poise from this guy. All right. Come here, come here. No, listen. And here comes the two. one point deduction. Oh, is that a two point? Yeah, you say two? Two. Yeah, two point deduction right two. there. Two. He went right to two. First time we've seen that in BKFC history. You, you lift him up and slam him. I'll run right there. You want to fight or you want to go home? What? Uh, you want to go home? Step back. Step back. We've had one point deductions. That's the first two point deduction in BKFC history. You know, all no, that no. really means to me is Alvarez needs to really start thinking about the knockout. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our ringside doctor calls a stop to our main event at the conclusion of round number three. For your winner, by TKO, your undisputed BKFC World Bantamweight Champion, Mr. Educated Hands, Reggie!
Reggie Barnett Jr. continues to roll. He is the reigning BKFC 135-pound world champion. Full credit to a game Daniel Alvarez. This fight ends by way of physician stoppage TKO in round number three. Reggie Barnett Jr. defeats Daniel Alvarez. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, presents BKFC 52. Friday, October 20th, with a world title fight. Watch as the man with the educated hands, Reggie Barnett, puts his title on the line against Keith Rockstar Richardson. Also, two undefeated warriors collide when the King of the Carolinas, Tony Loco Soto, knuckles up with Kevin Crew. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. and weight division, Keith Richardson versus Derek Perez. And the thing you can see here, Perez does have a, split, a, a slight three-inch reach advantage. He's going to want to utilize that. Richardson's got to use that in-and-out motion, trying to get inside. Perez is going to stay right in his range and try and throw a constant barrage of ones and twos right at Richardson. We are now set for the co-main event. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds. In the bantamweight division, presented to you by Lions Not Sheep Apparel. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner tonight. He wears black and silver. He stands five feet ten inches tall. His official weight, an even 136 pounds. He is undefeated in the squared circle at one and zero. Fighting out of Belen, New Mexico. Here is Derek Rage. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands 5 feet 6 inches tall. His official weight, 135.4 pounds. He is also undefeated at 2 and 0. Oh, fighting out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Here is the undefeated Keith Rockstar Richardson. Referee in charge of the action, Kerry Hatley. Keith Richardson said, I went to engage here, in the mid-range on my own terms with Derek Perez, but more importantly, I want to disengage and reset on my own terms. Hands high right, and tight and scratch line. for Derek Red. Perez. Round number one, switch of stances immediately off from scratch for Keith Richardson. And green trucks. Silver and black trucks for Derek Perez. Immediately see the fluidity and movement of both Richardson and Perez. Snapping the jab is Perez. Swing and a miss with the right hand. There's the counter right back from Perez. You can already see it doesn't matter when Perez gets hit. He's coming back with punches immediately. Perez so active with that jab to start this fight. Oh, right hand. And down goes Derek Perez. Great switch step right there. The Richardson oh. came with that right hand. Beautiful shot. That's it. This fight is over. And just like Richardson. And totally opposite of what we thought. We were talking about the chin of Perez. It just took one shot. It was that great switch step right there. We said, chase it from South Long, right hand, came with the right hand, and, and landed a good shot. We talked about, you talked about it right from the beginning, John. Right from the switch steps, right from the very beginning. Switch steps from South Long, Orthodox, back and forth. Confuses the point. There's a split second right there. You don't see the change, and it takes you a minute to adjust. Prison had time to I have long thought that Keith Richardson was one of the most underrated lower weight fighters of this era in pro MMA. At 3 0 with emphasis, Keith Richardson most definitely not underrated in BKFC. You can see where Richardson, right after the fight, he's called for the belt, he's called for that fight. It's hard not to give him that after his performances right there. He's showing what a dog he is, he's showing he's a knockout artist now. Watch this, just switch around. Right 
Beautiful shot. Watch referee Kerry Hatley. Now he has started the mandatory eight. He is watching Derek Perez. Perez goes to get up, does not have his equilibrium, falls down immediately. Kerry Hatley stops his fight. That is world class referee. That's what you're looking for. If you pop right up, it's one thing, but if you still can't get up after five seconds, there's no reason for this fight go up. He's just going to get hurt. Disappointment for Derek Perez and a lightning strike, A plus performance in victory for Keith Richards. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Kerry Hatley, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 37 seconds into round number one. For your winner, by TKO and still undefeated, Keith Rockstar Richardson. The champion of BKFC's bantamweight division, Reggie Barnett Jr., Watching, no doubt, with intent at home in Virginia. And the call out from the victor, Keith Richardson, for the title shot. A huge right hand, the left to follow, but it is that right hand that ends this fight. In 37 seconds of round number one, the winner, by way of technical knockout, Keith Richardson defeats Derek Perez. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, presents BKFC 52, Friday, October 20th, with a world title fight. Watch as the man with the educated hands, Reggie Barnett, puts his title on the line against Keith Rockstar Richardson. Also, two undefeated warriors collide when the King of the Carolinas, Tony Loco Soto, knuckles up with Kevin Crew. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. Tony Soto versus Tyler Goodshot. And Sean here, very strange. Both guys the exact same height. However, Tony Soto has a four-inch reach advantage. That means Tyler Goodshot needs to get inside, wants to do what he has to do to throw those punches. It's up to Tony Loco to keep him long and make him pay each time Tyler Goodshot steps close. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Sanctioned by the South Carolina Athletic Commission. Chairman Edwin Estridge. Commissioners in attendance. Dr. John Lucas. Dr. Paul Kennebar. Dr. Derek Messer. The three judges scoring our main event. Choice Stamey. Inkem Udega. And Barry Lindemann. And the third man inside the squared circle, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Andrew Glenn. And now, with our bare knuckle fans watching live worldwide on the BKSC app for the second time in South Carolina history from the Bon Secours Wellness Arena Fight Fan of Greenville, it's time to knuckle yep, Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black and gold. He stands five feet nine inches tall. His official weight, 155.8 pounds. His impressive bare knuckle record stands at four victories opposite two defeats. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Ely, Cambridgeshire, England. Here is the hard punching, exciting Tyler Il Tornado. Good. 
Good shot! And across the ring, his opponent fighting on the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and gold. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 155.9 pounds. He is undefeated inside the squared circle at four and oh. Fighting out of Hickory, North Carolina, by way of Brooklyn, New York. Here is the undefeated Tony Loco Sato. John said, I believe Tony Soto is overconfident, and I know he's never fought anyone at my level. Round number one. Black and yellow trunks for Tony Soto. Black and gold trunks for Tyler Goodchild. A rule to slip immediately by referee Andrew Black. So he exploded back to his feet. Stand jab for Goodchild. The duck under into the clinch. Half time pump step by Tony Soto. On the overhand right, left hand. Left hand on the inside. Good job, he's cut. You see the spear of blood on his face. Good job, coming forward, so they're fanning with the right hand. So the step of Soto, that's the step of Good job coming forward off the jab. Unfortunately, that's been a theme lately for Tyler Good job. Just getting here watching. Starting to leak blood. Stiff jab, left hook, right hand, double jab right back from Soto. That was slick, now circling out. Now to the body on the inside. Entry from good job. So we're off the jab. The fighters continue movement. Left hook on the turn. And across the face of the Englishman Tyler Goodjohn. Goodjohn on the entry counter. Left hook, right hand, left hook. Straight one, two. Big shots, half time run. Downward right hand now from Tony Soto. Seconds remaining, round number one of our main event. Heavy feints from Good John. So on the duck under, resetting. In the center circle. A tight striking guard for Good John, looking for the entry. Right hand. Left hook down from Good John. Good John is bleeding bad right now. He might feel a sense of urgency. Left hook, shovel uppercut. Right hand on the entry from Goodjohn. Right hand again, counter left hook. To the body goes Goodjohn to the bell. That ends round number one. Big ovation from the Springville, South Carolina crowd is round number two now underway. It looks like he has two cuts, but one over each eye. He's got to be careful coming in with that those hands right there. So bouncing from the outside. Goodjohn bouncing to the inside. Both fighters, phenomenal hand speed footwork. Good hook, left hook right back. Just off the board for good job. So they to the body, good job to the body. Get on the left hand, fast hands on that exchange from Soto. To the clinch, good job with his back against the ropes. Separation order received by referee Andrew Glenn. If I'm in Soto's corner, I'm telling him, just land punches, just touch him. You don't have to worry about how hard they are. You're cutting this guy open. Good job stepping the naked right hand. Resetting in the center circle. 115 remaining round number two. Two three thrown by Soto. You see the creativity. Both fighters good right hand from Good John. Heavy in the clutch. The hook from Soto draws the break. Right back to it from Andrew Glenn. Back to it from Tony Soto. Good John now coming forward. Good John on the walk down pressure. Counter left hand. Left hand, right hand by Good John. Good job, big right hand on the step in. Left hook right back. Soto now, good job to the body on the double overs. And I think what Soto's doing very well, he's trying to get off first. He's trying to land first against his opponent. Anything he can do to cut open, make those cuts a little bit worse. Soto jab to the body. Get two cuts on the face of Tyler Goodjohn. Side of his right brow, inside of his left brow. Behind the inside of his right brow, more severe, at least was more severe as we started round number two. So the point back to hook, double jab. Good job walking forward. Good left hand, right hand. And a tight striking guard for Tyler. Good job into the clinch. 
Good jump to the body. Under hook again, snatched by Soto, draws the break. The restart from Andrew Glenn. That ends round number two. You saw the dominant, undefeated, okay, double okay. BKFC world champion, Luis Palomino in the corner of his former opponent. Now teammate friend Tyler Goodjohn, round number three. Goodjohn coming forward off the right hand, right to the body. Number two is right back from Soto. Despite all the animosity, genuine respect between these two fighters for their respective skill sets. Body to the head. Goodjohn turning up the temperature ever so slightly here in round number three. And this is what he said he wanted. Keep his opponent fighting longer, get him in the later rounds. That's where he's going to step up. Striking guard for Soto. Soto looking to counter. Good job pressing forward. Defensive overhook snatched by Soto. Good job. On the dirty boxing left hand, right hand. Separation now from Soto. Soto to the body. Soto jack to the sternum. And the uppercut. Real creativity again you're seeing from Soto as you see it from Good job. Skill. You know, Good John talked about being able to counter make his opponent pay, but I think he does better when he's getting off first, actually. There's the creativity in the rear right uppercut from Tyler. Good job, good job to the body. And now the takedown. You can see there from the pushers a lot more being thrown and landed by Soto. Obviously illegal under this PKFC rule set. Time called by referee Andrew Glenn. That's not because of the takedown. This is a medical timeout. Thumbs up again from Andrew Glenn. I'm liking the letting this fight go on, Sean. To use an English expression, Chris, tell her good job couldn't be bothered by those cuts. Couldn't be bothered, I love it. Good job coming forward, left hook from Soto. So we're going to faint. Good job, duck under right hand, right to the body, left hook. With his back against the ropes, the separation. That ends round number three. And Sean, I don't know if I saw that probably, but it looked like one of those punches hurt Tony Soto. He did a great job, if it did, of clinching. Now he's a good job right there. He had a punch, it like it hurt him. He grabbed that. Hey, was a very smart, Tony intelligent talking. move. And you're back in the Tony Soto. Fight him, Tony Loco. And right here, a couple good punches right, here being thrown by good job. So, good take here out by Tony Soto. Here we go, round four, gentlemen, round four. Here's a good few punches right there. Look like it buckled Tony Loco for a second. Round number four underway. Right, right, right. Soto right. the body. No punch, no punch. The club. He blend to an outstanding job keeping this fight moving. I thought he was obliging. See the skill set from both Soto and Good Job. Hand speed, the creativity, the footwork. Now, great body work by Good Job. Good job by Good Job. Throwing the body right there, but Tony Loco does a great job of tying up when he's in trouble. Soto on the left hand. There's the bowl punch. Big hook to the body. Counter left hook from Soto after Good Job landed. Good Job on the roll under. Picks up from Soto resetting. I think that's because of that right hand the body. The good job keep landing. Flurry by good job to the head, then that left hook to the body, digging. More than in shots. Strong hand on the entry. Big shots, counter left hand from Soto. Right hand right back from good job. Great action right there, Sean. Good job left to the body. Left hand getting through from Soto. 45 seconds remaining round four. We thought this would be a great fight. This is a great fight. Right hand. Counter right hand right back. Big shots to the body from Goodjohn. Soto with his back against the ropes. Defensively snatching the half tie block. Somebody's mouthpiece threw out that saw Sean. It's a mouthpiece of Tony Soto. You can see the deep breaths he's taking right now. Oh, nope. Mouthpiece of Tyler Goodjohn. <laughs> Both Andrew Glenn and I thought it was Soto's mouthpiece. Five seconds to go round four right hand. 
jab into the clinch. And that's a smart defensive clinch by Soto. That's the evolution of this modern revival of technical fighting. And we are through four rounds. Next up, the fifth and final round. This last round could definitely decide who wins this guy. I feel like Good Job feels like he's coming on these last few rounds. The fighter certainly have to approach this fifth and final round. Like this is must win into the clinch. Great, great. Step back, step back, step back. Turn. Good job trying to throw combinations in there. Tony Loco do a great job of tying up his opponent there. The right up hook up from Soto did not land. Straight jab, that landed from Soto. Again coming forward. On the right hand, that landed flush from the Englishman, Tyler Goodjohn. You can clearly see who the fresher fighter is at this point. It's definitely Tyler Goodjohn. Right, right. Step back, step back. Don't punch him, don't punch him. See our strike stance presented by backed up energy drink. From the restart, there's the jab, the jab right back. Right hand, good left hand now from Soto. Soto now to the body. Goodjohn's back against the corner cushion. 65 seconds remaining, fifth and final round. Forward off the left hand, right hand, right back from Soto. Good downward overhead right. To the body from Soto, resetting. Good job, forward from the center circle. Good job, back to the body, now to the head. Soto to the body. Half time come again from Tony Soto. No punches, no punches, step back. You can tell both guys really want to win this fight. They're just leaving all out there, so both guys push out. Back and forth action. Soto on the jab, overhead right. Good right hand on the counter from Soto. Good shot, slipping. Right, the roll right, from Tyler back, no Good shot, no into the clinch. Knuckle up. Restart from Andrew Glenn and a call of knuckle up with emphasis. Stretch drive now with our main event. Fifth and final round. Get into the clinch. Both fighters throw it. Left counter on the right hand. Good shot, landing with his back against the ropes. Hard re entry from Soto. Heavy pressure in the clinch on the turn. Both fighters will look for one more significant shot. There is the bell. That is the end of an outstanding main event. Man, that is going to be tough to call. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the decision, let's have a round of applause for one of the greatest main events in BKFC history. After completing the scheduled five, our judges at Kate Ringside are all in agreement at 48-47 to the winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated Tony Loco Soto. Five and zero oh right now. He just keep going, calling for the title fight. Great job, both guys. Tony Soto got the win, though, Shump. The three South Carolina judges seeing it the same. Three rounds to two, 48-47 in favor of Tony Soto. That was a phenomenal main event contested by two truly phenomenal fighters. The winner by way of unanimous decision and now 5-0 in BKFC, Tony Soto defeats Tyler Goodjohn. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, presents BKFC 52, Friday, October 20th, with a world title fight. Watch as the man with the educated hands, Reggie Barnett, puts his title on the line against Keith Rockstar Richardson. Also, two undefeated warriors collide when the king of the Carolinas, Tony Loco Soto, knuckles up with Kevin Crew. Watch it live on the BKFC app, downloaded at BKFC.com. 
and Tools brings you the numbers for Chevy Bridges versus Kevin Froome. And you can see we have a three-inch height advantage, three-inch reach advantage. Also, his fist size is a little bit bigger. But that's what Kevin Froome wants to utilize. He can stay outside when he wants to close that gap as he needs, but he has to utilize all those physical attributes against a very tough Chevy Bridges. Welcome to the biggest bare-knuckle extravaganza of all! Welcome to Knuckle Mania 3! We are set for the next fight of the night, scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division, presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 155.4 pounds. He holds an undefeated BKFC record at 1-0. Fighting out of Kansas City, Missouri, here is the undefeated Kevin. Crew! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and white. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall. His official weight, 155.8 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at one victory opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Durant, Oklahoma. Here is Chevy the Wild Man. And our referee in charge of the action, Mr. Knuckle Up, Andrew Glenn. Kevin Kroom said of Chevy Bridges, right, so he's tough, he's willing to engage aggressively, and that type of opponent fits my style perfectly. Round number one, you did start off the scratch line for Chevy Bridges. Black and white trucks. Black trucks for Kevin Kroom. Chevy Bridges race, right there. Race. Step back, step back Bridges here. into the gable no, that immediately draws the break from referee Andrew Glenn. And that's what he needs to do. He cannot let him get in there and just pull his head down and go to work. Go back to the outside off the jab. Hands high and tight for Chevy Bridges. Overhand right, left hook just misses from the group. Left hand and down goes Chevy Bridges. And Bridges looks very bad to He dropped like a sack of potatoes right there, Sean. UFC and BKFC veteran Jason High. Disappointment for Chevy Bridges. Bridges is a very talented fighter. Very tight clinch. Found himself into the mid range, but he was just an onslaught of pressure and volume. Well, the thing is, like I said, you don't know where he's coming from. From him, is he trying to punch you outside? Is he trying to work to get inside to grab the clinch? So many things you have to defend right there. It makes it difficult. Where to look, your eyes are deceiving you. So if you're trying to stop one, he's coming with the next wave. He's gonna you're gonna defend the rush, he's gonna throw hard punches on the outside. That's what he did right there. Worked his way in sometimes, but right there, if you don't stop those hard punches, if you're looking for him to rush in, he's gonna hit you and hurt you. Hey, and once again being very happy with himself, such a showman out here. You gotta like what he's doing. We go to Jeff Houston. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 11 seconds into round number one. For your winner by KO, Kevin Cruz! And Sean Croom just keeps looking better and better right now. He thinks he's the best person we have in this division. And right now, it's hard to say that he is not. Phenomenal from Kevin Croom against a very tough, very game, very aggressive Chevy Bridges. Croom rushing into the pocket, out undaunted, coming back in the right and the left hand. Bridges flat on his stomach, the 10 count in the win. Victorious by way of first round knockout, Kevin Kroom defeats Chevy Bridges. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, presents BKFC 52, Friday, October 20th, with a world title fight. Watch as the man with the educated hands, Reggie Barnett, puts his title on the line against Keith Rockstar Richardson. Also, two undefeated warriors collide when the King of the Carolinas, Tony Loco Soto, knuckles up with Kevin Crew. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. October 20th, BKFC will bring an action-packed event to Columbia, South Carolina. It's time to knock off In the main event, Bantamweight champion Reggie Barnett will put his title on the line against Keith Richardson. Hell-bent on keeping his championship reign alive. Barnett looks to make his third consecutive BKFC title defense. A finisher who remains undefeated, Richardson aims to secure another first round knockout to his impressive resume. All due respect to Richard Barnett, he's held the belt. That's my belt now. I want it. Before the Bantamweight title is put on the line, unbeaten Tony Loco Soto. Clashes with UFC veteran Kevin Kroon. And a lightweight title eliminator. Soto is currently on a five fight win streak with no intention of slowing down on his rise to lightweight gold. Are you not entertained? Longtime MMA staple Kevin Kroon looks to continue his BKFC career with another vicious knockout. Shit, man, I'm taking on all covers. It doesn't matter to me. Who will carry gold and who will put themselves in a position to capture it? This is BKFC 52 Spotlight. Hey, Fight fans, I'm Ron Kruk. Welcome to the beginning in the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. From BKFC 1 all the way to current day, Reggie Barnett Jr. has never lost focus on his goals. To the body with the left hand, almost a bolo punch. It took me a while to, to come into my own, to find my niche, and to have a real understanding of what bare knuckle is. It's not even about the belt, it's not about the change, it's not, it's, you don't know the struggles that I've overcome, you have not been through the things that I've been through, you have not seen the wars that I have seen to get to where I am. And those are the things that make us, if you look at the other champions within our league and the things we've overcome, you know, and what we've been through, those are what have made us champions. So he is taking some big shots, Velasquez. Barnett making this a true bare knuckle fight. Entering into his 12th fight under the BKFC banner, Barnett aims to remain at the top of the talent stack bantamweight division. I'm coming to hurt you. I've had enough five round fights. I'm done with that. I'm, the mentality is to come finish you as quick as possible. That's how I've been training, to maim, disable, or destroy you in the shortest amount of time. That's the energy I'm bringing into this fight. Well, boxing is point fighting, but this is not boxing. This is bare knuckle, this is brutality. And that's what I plan on exercising, is the, 
the, the fullest form of my brutality that I have learned over the last 11 fights. Bantamweight number one contender Keith Richardson prepares for his title fight showdown in South Carolina at his longtime gym, Modern Warrior MMA. After a lengthy career in mixed martial arts, Richardson burst onto the BKFC scene, going 3-0, and and is now on the cusp of a world title. You know, this title shot, it means the world to me. Um, I enter everything I do wanting to be the best. The easiest way to show that you're the best is have that title around your waist. With everything I've been through in this year, like it's been a real tough year for me uh, personally, but professionally it's been one of the top, top years of my career. It'll mean the world to me to uh, take that belt home. You know, after losing my father earlier this year, this year's pretty much been dedicated to him. You know, my whole career has been dedicated to like my Marine brothers that I lost overseas. You know, I'm not just doing this for me. You know, I've had three fights this year, two knockouts, and uh, fight of the year candidate. Richardson on the left, count on the left down from Scargis. Richardson coming forward, left hand on the entry. Scargis back to South Pole. Right hand, knockdown number one. Now look at that. That is the big left hand from Scargis, turned it over. Richardson back to the clinch. That is the end of a phenomenal fight. Scoggins fight it was the ultimate fight for me at the at, at the right time with everything I was going through because I just got to just got to unload all the emotions everything I was going through like I lost my dad two weeks before that fight so I just got to bite down on the mouthpiece brawl knock each other around and then uh, empty all the emotions out after that big win it was a great fight it probably was fight of the year but it was a very evenly matched fight it was a hell of a war for him and he left that fight bloodied and battered so you can't say that it was a dominant decision if you left it bloodied and battered i've had dominant decisions and maybe had a scratch on me all right i mean look at the herrera fight that was a dom you call that a dominant decision beat the crap out of gene herrera he was all swelled up black and blue and bloody and i maybe had a scratch I'm the only fighter from bare knuckle tryout number one that is a current world champion. So when you talk about OG status, I respect my other OGs, but I am the original, original BKFC OG. I am the first and the only one to come from the first tryout. And I knew what I was gonna be. I just didn't know in what amount of time. You know, and I'm gonna continue to grow and get better until I decide that my time is up in the city. I didn't get into this sport to fight scrubs. Like, if, if I'm mentioning your name, it's, it's, it's a sign of respect. All due respect to Reggie Barnett. You know, he's, he's held the belt, but that's my belt now. I want it. I want the top guys at the top of their game. I'm in this to challenge myself to be the best that I can. I want Reggie at his best because when I, when I win that belt, I want to know I earned it. Before the Bantamweight title clash, Two undefeated lightweight elites with world championship aspirations of their own will go to war. After a fight of the night performance last May against seasoned vet Tyler Goodjohn, Tony Soto believes he's the uncrowned king at lightweight. And with another victory on October 20th, it gets him one step closer to proving it. When it comes to my weight division, when it comes to what I'm doing, I'm one of the best in the division, I'm one of the best in the organization. Honestly, when it comes to this fight, the focus is different. I'm in a different camp, got a different mindset. I'm so prepared, I'm ready for anything and everything. And I think this is gonna be a new and beautiful blossom version of myself. I don't give a fuck about what happened in the past because I'm looking towards the future. Having yet to taste defeat in the squared circle, UFC vet Kevin Kroom looks to put an exclamation mark on his performance at BKFC 52. Looking to add another vicious KO to his already impressive highlight reel. Kroom is confident ahead of his title elimination bout. Oh uh, man, this is gonna be uh, a knockdown down out brawl. I highly doubt it goes to the end. I, I don't really see it being a decision. Uh, <laughs> one of us is going out. And uh, yeah, man, the uh, kid's tough and, and we're gonna go bang.
Um, honestly, I'm not impressed about anything he's done. I think the caliber of fighters that I fought before him were more game. I think he's going to bring in a high level, you know, clinch game, but I'm very comfortable in the clinch. I'm very comfortable and, and I'm very acclimated to using my distance and that squared circle. There's nothing that he's going to bring that I'm not prepared for. I haven't seen, but I think what I'm bringing to him is something that he hasn't seen in a squared circle because you can get hit by gloves, but when you get hit by these slugs, huh, you sleep with the bugs. Oh, this is war, baby. Like, <laughs> have fun. You know, uh, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna throw down. On October 20th in Columbia, South Carolina, at the Colonial Life Arena, Reggie Barnett Jr. will put his bantamweight title on the line against his toughest challenger to date, Keith Richardson. Plus, a lightweight battle between two fighters who are looking for a shot at a world title of their own in Tony Soto and Kevin Kroon. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, presents BKFC 52. Friday, October 20th, with a world title fight. Watch as the man with the educated hands, Reggie Barnett, puts his title on the line against Keith Rockstar Richardson. Also, two undefeated warriors collide when the King of the Carolinas, Tony Loco Soto, knuckles up with Kevin Crew. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com.
Jericho Fighting Championship is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Welcome to Columbia, South Carolina, the capital city, where tonight the athletes of the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship take over the Palmetto State once again. And the free view starts right now. Two bare knuckle bouts to kick off tonight's loaded card, setting the tone for the entire night of bare knuckle fighting. Later on in the pay per view, a war in the lightweight division undefeated Beast battle to be next up for a championship bout. The bombastic Kevin Kroon and the King Tony Loco Soto. And the main event, the educated hands of our bantamweight champion have been dishing out lessons, but nobody has risen faster than the former Marine Keith, the rock star Richardson. Can the Carolina boy take the title home to Rock Hill, or does Reggie Barnett keep on teaching tonight? And welcome to the Colonial Life Arena here in Columbia, South Carolina, home of the South Carolina Gamecocks, where we have an incredible night of fights for you tonight. We are back in South CAC. That being said, you are locked in right here on the free view. A couple of free fights to kind of give you a taste, and that's where we rope you in and get you for the full main card pay-per-view. All you got to do is get the BKFC app. It's $7.99 for this event, and you're going to get three more events included. All those international events, you're going to get that just for that $7.99. I repeat, the best value in all of combat sports is the BKFC app get the entire night including our championship main event that is a lot to be excited about and i think we got the bare knuckle show with brian Sosha too so we got to we got to give him a plug too brian Sosha always needs a plug right so folks what a night it is going to be of course we talk about that championship main event but right now before we get things cracking let's send it down to our incredible commentary team sean wheelock and chris lytle Sean, incredible November. Look at all these events. They're all in different countries, four countries, all in the month of November. You know, Dave Feldman wanted to go international. I think that's about as international as it gets. Cyrus, Friday, November 17th, we will make our BKFC debut in Bulgaria. We will be in Sofia. And as we just saw in November, historic for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship shows in the U.S the UK, the aforementioned Bulgaria, as well as Thailand. John, I'm really excited about Bulgaria. One of the greatest countries for fighting. You know, all that area is so good right there. Some of the best fighters in the world. I know we had trials out there, and they said usually we get, you know, five, six, eight good fighters from trials. They said we had 70. I mean, unbelievable region. Those guys are going to come to fight. They're going to really be want to take over BKFC. Oh, you hit it right on the head because you talk about the striking. And in Eastern Europe, that's where they've been doing it in a big way for a very, very long time. So excited to see their debut here in BKFC. But what about Thailand? Thailand is a very, very special night, November 4th. And of course, that incredible main event that has anybody combat sport fan mouth watering. You're talking about Bukau, you're talking about Senchai and bare knuckle Thai rules. Wow. Bukau and Senchai, not just two of the greatest Muay Thai fighters in the history of that sport, two of the most famous humans <laughs> in Thailand right now. These are absolute mega stars, transcending Muay Thai, transcending combat sports, transcending sports into the full pop culture. This is historic. They have never fought before. Now they will fight in BKFC, Chris, in these modified rules. And I like what Dave Feldman did. He made the rules more entertaining. He made it where there's only a few seconds to be able to clinch, elbows, knees. It's going to be a great fight, but uh, just make it as exciting as possible. I love it. Well, at this point, I mean, where aren't we going to go, Sean? You know, Feldman has taken us to all these different continents just in this month. What could be next? Could it be down under in Australia? Could it be in Africa? We know so many great fighters are coming out of the African continent. Where next here for BKFC? Yeah, I think all of the above, Cyrus. Literally, as you look, possibly South America, possibly Australia, certainly more into Europe as we go into Asia, talks of the Middle East. And as we look internally in the United States, more state athletic commissions now welcoming in BKFC. You will see a number of new major states coming online for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship in 2024. And Sean, as long as we don't go down Antarctica, I don't, I don't want to go. <laughs> Snow, ice, I'm out. I don't know, man. I want to cross that one off my list. You know there's a couple of scientists down there that have beef that want to settle it. I say we make it happen, and I hit all seven continents. That being said, guys, what a night it's going to be. Let's talk about what you're going to see here at BKFC 52. 
Reggie Barnett has been so dominant the way he is picking his opponents apart, dismissing his challengers. But Keith Richardson, there's something special about this guy. And in 2023, it has been the year of the rock star. Cyrus, you just mentioned this is BKFC 52. We go back to BKFC 1. Reggie Barnett on that card, defeating Travis Thompson. Reggie Barnett has since emerged, not only is the champion of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships 135 pound division, truly one of the absolute pound for pound best in the entire sport. Keith Richardson, a great run in MMA, 34 pro mixed martial arts bouts. And Chris, now he enters our main event as the 3-0 challenger. Reggie, educated hands is his nickname, and it's like that for a reason. He's came out and he's made this his own sport. He's went through, he's broken down everything and said, why this works, why does it? I just sit there and talk to him. It's, it's amazing how he's educated on what's going on here, and that's why he's been able to be so victorious right there. He keeps his range, he keeps his distance. However, he's going up against a beast. Richardson has been phenomenal. He can bully you, he can push you around, he can, he can win a war, or he can win with knockout. It's going to be a great fight show. Uh, such a big moment there for Richardson, the biggest moment of his combat sports career. Could he win a world championship tonight in his home state? We'll find out here in our main event of BKFC 52. Of course, if you want to make things a little bit more interesting, our folks at DraftKings can help you do that. But Chris, when you take a look at the odds, there has to be something sticking out here, something that some of these betters can take advantage of. I mean, there's always so many great fights. If you really study, you understand this. The one that jumps out at me, you know, Uzmanov, he's a striking coach. He's very good. He's very dominant. Minus 130, that's a great bet, in my opinion. All right, well, let's talk about getting those bets in. DraftKings has got you covered. You get a $50 bonus bet courtesy of DraftKings with your first deposit of $5 or more. All you got to do is scan that QR code right there on your screen. Do it right now. Then put in the promo code DKBKFC, and you are off and running. Now let's take a look at the rules brought to you by Mint 45. All fights scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Fights are scored by three judges on the 10-point must system. Hand rounds must be at least one inch below the bare knuckles. Punching in the clinch is allowed. No three knockdown rule. No being saved by the bell in any round. Of course, no knees, kicks, elbows, takedowns, or submissions. And now let's go to our first Crescent Tools. Tell the tape. We open tonight here in South Carolina with a bout in the lightweight division. Trevor Loken versus Bessad Usmanov. And you can see here, Sean, Loken does have a three inch height advantage, but it's that five and a half inch reach advantage that I think is going to be the biggest key right there. Uzmanov needs to get inside to land those shots. It's up to Loken to keep him away. BKFC 52, our third time in South Carolina, our debut in Columbia. We're on the campus of the University of South Carolina Colonial Life Arena. And bout number one of 10 is upon us. Tezad Usmanov from Tajikistan and Central Asia, now based in the American Southwest in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is Usmanov's second fight in BKFC. Usmanov, 39 and five in pro Muay Thai, 12 and four in pro MMA. He's also had three pro boxing bouts. Usmanov is an extremely smart fighter. He's an extremely studious fighter. And to the surprise of no one, very clear eyed in our fighter meeting, Usmanov said, I'm going to continually read my opponent and continually make adjustments as this fight progresses. One thing he said that he didn't fully understand the clinch the first time he fought. Understands that way better now. Once they get in there, utilize it. He feels like he has a lot of angles in there, a lot of things he can do from the clinch he's gonna do this time. Trevor Loken made his BKFC debut January of this year. He defeated Marcus Bramage by first round knockout. And you can see right here a very hard style to fight when you come against Bramage, just coming in with odd angles. But Loken did not care. He came with a lot of straight forward, straight hard punches. And that's what he does Well, he comes in. This guy's all offense. He's focused on coming in and doing damage. You look at this, throwing caution to the wind right there, throwing hard punches the entire time. And when he lands these shots, he's gonna hurt you. That's his game plan right now. He already told us he wants to come in there, land hard shots, come straight forward, bring the fight to his opponent. And when he does that, and when he lands, he does a great job.
This is bout number three in BKFC for Trevor Loken. Had a good run as an AMI and MMA where he went 5-0. and oh. And our fighter being Loken, who just like Usmanov is a very cerebral fighter, very well spoken, said, I've really been focusing on my defense, focusing on my movement. But with that said, Loken told us, I'm still going to go hard for the knockout. Yeah, he said he wants to do everything similar with that coming straight for. However, he wants to tighten up his technique, keep the hands blocking the entire time, making sure the chin's not open. It just takes one mistake right here. He's figured that out. He's going to try and correct those mistakes and be perfect out there. Loken said, I have absolutely no interest in going the distance. I'm not going to be reckless, but when I see chances to go hard for the finish, I'm going to take full advantage of those chances. And he understands he has a little bit of a reach advantage. He wants to stay just outside his opponent's range. We can just land at the end of his shots. He's got that five and a half inch reach. He wants to stay right there. To get us started, we send it to the always outstanding Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you one and all to the Colonial Life Arena here in beautiful Columbia South Carolina. And welcome to BKFC 52. BKFC Freeview begins tonight with five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division, presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears blue. He stands five feet seven inches tall. His official weight, 149.4 pounds. Tonight, he steps into the squared circle for the second time, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of Kujan Tajikistan. Here is Bexod, the Lion Usmano. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears white. He stands five feet ten inches tall. His official weight, an identical 149.4 pounds. His BKFC record stands at one victory opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Raleigh. North Carolina, here is Trevor Logan. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. As Usmanov told us, I have to keep moving. My key to victory is to continually take away time and space from Trevor Logan. Round number one. Sporting touch of hands, right to it off the jab, goes the North Carolinian, Trevor Loken. He's in the white trunks. The fight from Tajikistan, Bezad Usmanov in the blue trunks. Usmanov on the outside. Loken looking to come to the inside. Big overhand right from Usmanov. To the half-time club, right hand on the exit from Usmanov. Just like I thought this fight would be, he's ever coming right at each other. Big swings from both fighters. Loken now opening up with the right hand. Rear right uppercut, another one from Trevor Loken. Loken to the inside, counter right hand, and another right from Bezad Usmanov. That did some damage right there. Logan, all his wrist, knees buckled his a little bit right there. To the clinch. The fighters trying to snatch half tie plum. Hard Lots right hand guys. to the Watch body from Usmanov. Looking on this separation. Something Usmanov said he really wanted to start targeting that body and that'll drop the hands and then he can go upstairs. Heavy feints from both fighters on the step in. Left hand, rear right uppercut from Logan. Overhand right from Usmanov. Loken now coming forward. Loken hard off the jab. Usmanov circling on the outside. Overhand right, left hand on the entry from Usmanov. And Loken's doing a great job of throwing those straight punches, those jabs, right, and doing right. some damage. Step I think back, he cut back, his please. opponent open with that. 45 seconds remaining, a phenomenal round number one. Both fighters having their moments here in the first round of this, our opening bout, BKFC 52. Now Usmanov coming forward. There's a straight one-two from Loken. Usmanov circling out. Logan doing a great job of using that range. That one-two is landing very well. On the reset, again, you see the heavy feint. Overhand right, overhand left, just off the mark from Bezad Usmanov. Circle. Jab just off the mark from Loken. See the blood around the left eye of Usmanov. Final seconds, round number one. Usmanov on the entry, overhand left. Right, right, Smart clinch. step back. Fighters definitely understand wrestling. They understand grappling, in fighting at a high level. That ends round number one. And Sean, this is one of those fights where you can tell both guys 
have gotten their feet wet. They learned a little bit about this floor. They're both leveling up in this fight. You can see they are much better than the last time we saw them. Both guys. Good run. You have them cut, okay? In for that cut. Time his shots. You're doing good. When you're crowding and rushing in, you're eating shots, okay? Keep that little bit of that distance. Time him, okay? Time those shots. He's loading up that right hand. You're seeing him. You're landing good. That's how you cut him up, okay? You got to time that right hand. When you're rushing in, get your hands up. When you're on that clinch, stay on the clinch. You landed good shots on the clinch, too. On that mid-range, you've got to keep your hands up, okay? That's it. You just got to keep your hands up. He's cut really bad in his eye. we got to target that eye, okay? okay? Keep your fucking hands up. Keep your distance in and out he and time okay. that shot. Here's some That's of that good work on the inside. Both guys landing hard shots on okay. the inside. Just like you said in the back, it's there. It's good there. overhand right. Those right. are the one I think yeah, that, that Logan, he didn't really see right. it coming. It kind of buckled him for a second, but he recovered well. Wasn't hurt bad. It just knocked him off bounce. But both these guys, like I said, are much improved from the last time we saw them. If there's such a term as cerebral brawler, it would apply to both Trevor Logan and Bezad Usmanov. Round number two, long jab from Logan. These are two tenacious and technical fighters. And, and Logan doing a good job of using his range and his reach, and that's where he does best, and he needs to stay right there. So he's not one, two. It's done a lot of damage so far. Smart of good left hand counter right hand from Logan. Jab to the sternum from Trevor Logan. Jab again. Overhand right, left hand again. Usmanov looking for that Chris. It's that overhand right and the overhand left or left hook on the entry. We definitely talked about his opponent drops that right hand. If he drops that right hand, he's going to get in with that left hook. It's going to hurt him. 115 remaining, round number two of this lightweight bout. Can you see the smear of blood under the left eye of Usmanov? That cut opening in round number one. Jab to the sternum again for Loken. Overhand right, there's the left hand again from Usmanov. That time went overhand left. Good head movement from Usmanov. You can see Usmanov is continuing to try to land that left hook. He targeted that because he saw his opponent dropped it in the past, and you can work on that, but it's really hard to change those, those habits you have. Long straight punches, big shots now from the mid-range for Loken. Usmanov circling out, reloads with an overhand right and another one. Both fighters continue to land big. Both continue to have their moments. Stocking pressure, though, for Lokit. Took those shots well from Usmanov. 30 seconds remaining, round number two. Left hand right back. One, two again. Counter left, counter right from Usmanov. Usmanov entry right, right hand right back from Lokit. Lokit now on the one, two into the clinch. To the body goes Trevor Lokit. From the half tie plug. Like an arm drag from Usmanov. Left hand, right hand, big swings. Oh, 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 out. Big left hand, and down goes Trevor Loken. Loken to his feet, taking the mandatory eight from Andrew Glenn, and that ends round number two. And Loken is in big trouble right there. He's lucky that that round ended. He was out on his feet right there. I think it was just a matter of time. You see massive swelling around and under Loken's left eye. So that, that was a round right there where you can see both those guys, they're doing what they want. You know, it, it's not a fight where somebody's doing something wrong. They're both doing very well. It's just Loken got caught right there at the end. They were both having very good moments in that round. You can see right here just a couple hard shots off balance, and right now he's in trouble. You can just tell it's just a jab that knocked him down. And so if Uzmanov was going for the... MMA finish right there, just a couple hard shots right there that knocked him off balance. It's that one to the neck sometimes that really does damage. Yeah, Loken, he, he's got some, some bad swelling okay, listen, guys. over Good that job, left eye. Right? Don't hit him on the ground, man. You're going to mess everything up. Don't hit him on the ground. Let's see if they let this fight keep going. I think they, they think they will. Chris, quite possibly, that was going to be a 10-9 round two for Trevor Loken instead. With that knockdown on the jab, movement, it's a like most said, likely 10-8 round number two for Bezad Usmanov. Like I said, both guys had their moments in that round. They were both doing some things very well. Here we go, gentlemen. Total line. Round three. It's been a Step great back fight over here. so Step far. Back over here. So the sportsmanship, the respect line. continues. Knuckle up! Fighters back up to scratch. Knuckle up from referee Andrew Glenn. Round number three. Yeah. It's those Excellent overhand fight. looping shots that are doing the damage to Logan right there. He's got to keep those hands up. Loken to the body, counter right hand on the straight right hand from Usmanov. Loken is tough as nails, man. He's getting hit with some bombs right here. Big shots, oh. right hook to the body, downward right hand, more big shots, and that is it, the standing TKO, and win number one in BKFC for Bezad Usmanov.
man, that was a great stoppage right there because Logan was hurt bad. He's just too tough for his own good, Sean. He was taking massive shots right there. Hey, brother. And you can just see the disappointment in Logan right there because he had such great moments against a high-level guy. He was doing very well. Just got caught with a couple shots that did damage, but like I said, he's being too tough with the ground. Look, coming straight forward, and he's eating these shots, but just doing so, he, like I said, tough as nails, but you can only take so many of them, and that body right there, those body shots really did some damage. He had some good defense right there, but this isn't boxing, Sean. You can't sit there and block with those gloves, because guess what? There's no gloves. Those little shots get through, but right there, that shot, that'd be blocked in boxing. It's not blocked here. That's a, that's a great way to start tonight. Yes, so, hey, so that, that was a high level, like you hey, talked about, technical brawl, hey, that's what you call that. You could TKO, see that yes, Trevor Loken was disappointed on the standing TKO, on the decision, the stoppage from referee Andrew Glenn, but he never argued with Glenn. That's very telling, Chris. I mean, you can't really argue. He knew he was hurt. He want, he, you could just say how bad he wanted to win. He, and it makes it worse when you have some flashes doing some great things. You had the guy cut open early. You're thinking, okay, this is going my way, and then, to lose it, it's disappointing. Good refereeing from Glenn. A great fight for both Trevor Loken and in victory, Bezad Usmanov. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, steps in, calling a stop to this fight at 24 seconds into round number three. For your winner, by TKO, Bezad the Lion Usmanov. Usmanov just improving much in that fight you could just tell he understands the the reins the tempo everything a little bit more and this guy could be a, a problem for a lot of people in this weight class trevor loken most definitely had his moments he is still a fighter to watch at bkfc and bezad usmanov most definitely a fighter to watch at bkfc the fighter from tajikistan by way of new mexico turning up the pressure the finish relentless intelligence precision and technique to the win. Victorious by way of third round TKO. Bezad Usmanov defeats Trevor Logan. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Let's go! Ah! Tonight only, you'll receive 20% off all bare-knuckle fighting championship apparel when you use the promo code BKFC52 at bareknuckleshop.com. There's a huge selection of hats, T-shirts, hoodies, and more to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. So place your order now at bareknuckleshop.com. And again, a reminder, you can use promo code BKFC52 at checkout to get 20% off BKFC apparel. So knuckle up and save at bareknuckleshop.com. And welcome back here to the Colonial Life Arena here in Columbia, South Carolina, as we just had a part burner to kick things off with our free view. And right now, in the free view, you're locked in, but you might not have the pay-per-view yet. We can make that happen. Just get the BKFC app, $7.99. That means you're going to get the incredible full card, the main card, the co-main event, Soto and Kareem. We're going to get the championship main event with Barnett and Richardson. A lot to be excited about. That's the BKFC app, $7.99. Get it right now. You don't want to miss what we have later on tonight, a fully stacked card. And speaking of fully stacked, folks, November 4th, BKFC Thailand. Bangkok once again, and it's going to be an incredible card. And not only are we going to have a lot of great Thai fighters on the card, we have something extremely special. Fu Kao, Sen Chai, anybody that is just kind of familiar with combat sports, and especially Muay Thai, then you know these two gentlemen. They are going to meet in our squared circle. It is going to be bare knuckle, Thailand rules, and it's very special. Let's take a look at what you can expect from BKFC Thailand. ที่นี่ไม่ต้องการนวม
มีแต่หมัดเท่านั้นมีแค่ของจริงเท่านั้นถึงจะอยู่รอดเจ็บจริงไม่ต้องห่วงผมมาที่นี่เพราะที่นี่คือเวทีของคนจริงเท่านั้นใน BKFC ใครก็ได้ผมได้หมดแต่ many people are asking what is bare knuckle Thai. Bare knuckle Thai is a new innovation in combat sports brought to you by Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. So the rules are based on traditional Muay Thai, but with a bare knuckle twist. Bare knuckle Thai rules are as follows: fighters compete in a BKFC squared circle. Fighters obviously compete bare knuckle. Fights are scheduled for five two-minute rounds, exactly the same as BKFC rules currently. There's one minute interval between each round. It is vital that we determine a winner. So, in the case of a draw after five rounds, we will go into a sudden death round. This fight will continue. During the fight, fighters are allowed to kick. Fighters can punch. Fighters can use elbow strikes. Fighters can also use knee strikes. Spinning attacks are allowed. Fighters can use the clinch, but only with the intention of attacking. The clinch is only permitted for three seconds. Sweeps and throws are not allowed. Stalling of the action is not allowed. Strikes to the back of the head or the spine are not allowed. Each match includes one referee and three judges. Fights will be scored on the 10-point must system. There is no three knockdown rule. Fighters cannot be saved by the bell in any round. So we have created this new fighting style to be fast, furious, and we guarantee non-stop action. แต่จริงๆแล้ว BKFC ทำให้มันเกิดขึ้นได้ในตอนนี้ผมก็เลยทําให้เราเรารู้สึกโอ้โหมันเป็นอะไรที่แบบสุดยอดของโลกจริงมันมีความหมายมากนะครับสําหรับที่เราได้ไปทักกันกับกับตำนานนะครับสุดยอดของมวยไทยสุดยอดของนักสู้ชื่อของผมไอ้ชมพัวขาวทุกคนที่ทุกคนรู้จักแต่พอเป็นนักมวยอาชีพนักมวยที่มีความชํานาญพอขึ้นไปบนเวทีเนี่ยเขาจะไม่มีความที่จะโชคจริงหรือไม่จริงนะครับพอขึ้นเป็นทีเนี่ยการเจ็บเจ็บปวดขึ้นต้องเอาชนะนะครับพูดต่อสู้บนเวทีให้ได้เนี่ยแน่นอนทุกคนที่ได้ดูผมคิดว่าต้องมันนะครับต้องได้ดูการพัฒนาของนักมวยสุดยอดนักมวยอย่างแน่นอนชกครั้งนี้มันเป็นอะไรที่ที่ต้องจังใจแล้วก็จริงจังนะครับต่อสู้เพื่อความชัยชนะอย่างแน่นอนหน้าตาเป็นอะไรที่แบบเราบ่งบอกเราบ่งบอกถึงความมั่นใจบ่งบอกถึงความสู้แข่งขาแขนเราเรามีความพร้อมอยู่แล้วไฟที่ทุกคนที่ต้องต้องชมเพราะว่ามันเป็นแบบสุดยอดมวยที่มาเจอกันอย่างแน่นอนจุดอ่อนนะครับของผู้ต่อสู้ผมคิดว่าเขาอาจจะไม่มองไม่เห็นจุดอ่อนเลยนะครับมองเพราะว่าเขามีความที่เก่งเก่งมากๆนะครับความเป็นเพื่อนเอาไว้ข้างล่างบนเวทีแล้วต้องตัดชินด้วยความแข็งแรงใครจะเป็นใครชนะและคิดว่าคนในโลกตั้งเยอะแยะทำไมต้องเป็นบัวขาวดีใจแล้วก็ตื่นเต้นเพราะว่าไฟนี้ไม่มีนวมหมัดล้วนๆเลยเราได้มาชกกับรายการที่เราไม่เคยชกมาก่อนคนที่ติดตามรายการนี้ก
็จะได้รู้จักผมไปในในตัวในใน,ในการที่ผมมาช่วงในรายการนี้โอเคนะครับผมจะตอบวันนี้แล้วก็ไม่ต้องถามอีกนะครับว่าผมจะต่อยกันจริงหรือไม่นะครับผมพอยืนยันตรงนี้ผมเอาชื่อผมเป็นประกันพวกผมต่อยกันวันทันเลตเปอร์เซ็นต์แน่นอนสู้กันจริงแน่นอนไม่มีการขึ้นไปจะหยอกล้อกันขึ้นไปคือใส่กันร้อยเปอร์เซ็นชัวขอให้ทุกคนติดตามได้ว่าพวกผมจะเป็นการชกที่แบบเต็มที่เต็มร้อยและใส่กันมันแน่นอนอาผมชกที่ผ่านผ่านมาคนอาจจะมองว่าผมเป็นการเล่นแต่จริงๆผมชกด้วยความไฟนี้นะครับผมต้องการจริงจังไฟนี้อาจจะเป็นไฟที่ผมตั้งใจกว่าทุกไฟใครจะเก่งกว่านั้นอันนี้ผมยังยังต้องดูวันชกแต่เรื่องที่ที่มองผมมองจุดบัวขาวคู่ชกของผมนะครับผมมองว่าเขาช้ากว่าผมผมเร็วกว่าเขาผมก็จะเอาเอาการเร็วที่ผมมีความรวดเร็วกว่าเขาเนี่ยแหละชกกับเขาให้เต็มร้อยในในการชกมวยของผมมาตลอดชีวิตของการชกมวยผมผมจะรวบรวมมาต่อยไฟนี้ผมยังไม่การันตีว่าจะชนะหรือจะแพ้แต่ผมคิดว่าแฟนมวยทั่วโลกได้ดูไฟนี้คุ้มค่าแน่นอนไม่ว่าจะแพ้หรือชนะคุณกับผมก็คือเพื่อนกันแต่คุณกับผมบนเวทีต้องเต็มร้อยทั้งคู่ที่นี่ไม่ต้องการนวมมีเต็มัดเท่านั้นมีแค่ของจริงเท่านั้นถึงจะอยู่รอดเจ็บจริงไม่ต้องห่วงผมมาที่นี่เพราะที่นี่คือเวทีของคนจริงเท่านั้นใน BKFC ใครก็ได้ผมได้หมดSo many people are asking, what is bare knuckle tie? Bare knuckle tie is a new innovation in combat sports, brought to you by Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. So the rules are based on traditional Muay Thai, but with a bare knuckle twist. Bare knuckle tie rules are as follows: fighters compete in a BKFC squared circle. Fighters obviously compete bare knuckle. Fights are scheduled for five two-minute rounds, exactly the same as BKFC rules currently. There's one minute interval between each round. It is vital that we determine a winner. So, in the case of a draw after five rounds, we will go into a sudden death round. This fight will continue. During the fight, fighters are allowed to kick. Fighters can punch. Fighters can use elbow strikes. Fighters can also use knee strikes. Spinning attacks are allowed. Fighters can use the clinch, but only with the intention of attacking. The clinch is only permitted for three seconds. Sweeps and throws are not allowed. Stalling of the action is not allowed. Strikes to the back of the head or the spine are not allowed. Each match includes one referee and three judges. Fights will be scored on the 10-point must system. There is no three knockdown rule. Fighters cannot be saved by the bell in any round. So we have created this new fighting style to be fast, furious, and we guarantee non-stop action.
Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. We are all the way live from Satellite 5. I'm Brian Socha, and as always, so much to get into this week on the Bare Knuckles Show. We're glad you're hanging out. Bare Knuckle just takes one shot. If he can land a good shot, he can do some damage. Six new major signings, a new location overseas that we're going to be doing. It gives me so much more energy and reason to go ahead and do what I do. Oh, oh, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez! That's inappropriate. <laughs> Light heavyweights for you now. The numbers presented by Crescent Tools for Michael Lale versus Daniel Cooper. Okay, Sean, you can see here everything very similar. Only thing different right here, you do have a little bit of height advantage for Cooper. However, I'm not sure if that is even an advantage. I feel like the shorter guy has the advantage there. They can throw those overhand, those looping shots, and they can land. It's harder for a taller guy to land those that goes over the top. So I would give that advantage to, to uh, Nile there. Daniel Cooper. Set for his bare knuckle fighting championship debut. He's had five pro MMA bouts, two in pro Muay Thai. At our fighter meeting, Cooper told us, I'm normally a very aggressive fighter in MMA and in Muay Thai, but in this, my BKFC debut, I'm really trying hard to be a patient fighter. My coaches want me to be a patient fighter. With that said, Cooper also told us, I like to move a lot. But in this, my BKFC debut, I want to be more stationary. Patient, stationary, so I can load up, be accurate with full power. Yeah, he said he loves to brawl. He would love to turn us into a brawl, but he doesn't need to. He shouldn't do that. He understands that. He talked about wanting to be stationary and throw with power. He feels like it's important to wait for the right time, wait for your openings, and then explode in. Cooper told us as he's been watching BKFC, he said, I don't really see people framing out of the clinch. If I'm in the clinch, I'm going to frame out. And when I frame out, then I will throw hard shots. Cooper said, I really believe in my legitimate knockout power. He understands he needs to be leery of this clinch right there. He's not super familiar with it, so he doesn't want to get in the clinch. Wants to get out, stay long, get in there and throw those power shots. Michael Lale set for his BKFC debut. He's had two pro boxing bouts, one in pro MMA, 18 AMI MMA bouts. At our fighter meeting, Lale told us just the opposite of Daniel Cooper. As Cooper said, I'm normally a mover, I want to be more stationary. Lale said, throughout my career, I've been pretty stationary. Now in this, my BKFC debut, I want to move. Lale said, I'm normally very much heavy on my front foot. I'm now trying to be able to move an angle off of my back foot. You can tell he's studied a lot, he's understood that. Wants to, you know, understands footing, footwork. He's really worked on that. Feels like he's training with a great team right now. He's had some time off and he feels like he's really grown as a fighter. He's ready to come in here, utilize that better head movement, sit down on his punches and throw hard. 20 fighters on this card, so 20 fighter meetings. And we give Michael Lale the quote of the week. He said, my opponent Daniel Cooper is a brute, but well then, I'm a brute as well. <laughs> Feels like he really needs to stay focused on his opponent. Doesn't want to focus on the event, the crowd, the size, the magnitude of what's going on. If he focuses on just his opponent, he's going to have a good night. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and white. 
He stands six feet, one inch tall. His official weight, 185.4 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of seven fights and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Columbus, Georgia, here is Daniel Super Cooper. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue and black. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 184 and 1 half pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of three fights. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Conover, North Carolina. Here is Micah, the Machine Lay. And our referee in charge of the action, Jason Collins. Michael Lael told us, I have to get inside with good footwork. I cannot reach, I cannot overextend. Jason Collins calling both fighters up to scratch. All right, guys, Call of knuckle up from Collins, round number one. Blue trunks for Michael Lael, black trunks for Daniel Cooper. The jab. With pressure immediately, right on his feet, just like he told us he wanted to be as Michael Lale. You can already see the contrasting styles right here. Lale going to come forward, put the pressure on. And right hand on the exit, last sequence from Daniel Cooper. Somebody you can tell looking to counter. It's in the step now of Daniel Cooper. Cooper backing out, circling up. Forward pressure again from Michael Lale, trying to mirror the hips. Good explosion to the inside comes Daniel Cooper. Cooper, big uppercuts, uppercuts right back with the right hand by Lael. On the overhook, right, active stop. clinch. Break. Now the call of break from referee Jason Collins. Turn. Of referee Turn. from Turn. Collins. Turn. Both fighters to throw to the head and body in that active clinch. Stalking pressure again from Michael Lael. Lael off the jab, left hand, big right hand. Counter left hand again on the overhook. Now goes Daniel Cooper to the body. Short right hand, right hand again from Lael. Driving pressure forward from Daniel Cooper in this clinch from the overhook. Like you said earlier, John, the referee doing a great job of letting these guys work in there. Smear of blood on the floor to Michael Lale. 40 seconds remaining, round number one of this light heavyweight bout. This tempo feels more like a featherweight bout. Forward pressure from Cooper. Lale undaunted coming forward again. His back foot is Cooper looking to explode in. Big left hand. Right hand ducking his head, Lael landed. To the body goes Cooper, big shots now from Daniel Cooper on the overhook again. You can tell Lael, that bothered him, get hit his eyes, something happened right there. He was not handling that very well for a second. Smear of blood under the left eye now, Michael Lael. To go along with the smear of blood on his forehead that opened up earlier in round number one. Driving Stop. pressure from Lael Cooper, countering against the ropes as we end round number one. And Sean, you talked about the pace right there, not not much like a light heavyweight, but more of a lighter Breathe. weight. Let's see, we that could be in. some problems for Lael because he, he's got, got a little bit of an inside. inactive period. Breathe, okay? We don't want to rush. Once we put that, wait, once we put that pressure, I don't want to rush you. I got ready, got him in the ropes. Set him up now. Set him up, he's going straight back. He's bouncing on his punches. I want you to see that, okay? Work out of your jab. Work out of your jab. Good? All right. Water? All right. Catching him clean. Yeah, but just don't run in. You're running in, baby. He's waiting for you. Scan yeah. the QR code. Also go online to BKFC.com. Go to the BKFC app. Okay. Is your way to watch tonight's main card in which you will see our main event. And you will see that man, Reggie Barnett Jr., back of the house. Only fans gives you an exclusive look at the champion. Right, Reggie count. Barnett Jr. looking to successfully defend his BKFC 135-pound strap as he faces Keith Richardson. Taylor Starling behind him. Richardson, 34 pro MMA bouts, enters our main event, 3-0 in bare knuckle right, fighting championship. Main card begins top of the hour. The prelims continue round number two. Fast start off of stretch round number two for Daniel Cooper, putting Lales back against the ropes. Overwork for Michael Lale. Separation from Jason Collins. You feel like Cooper right there, he felt like he had his opponent hurt at the end of the last round. He wants to jump right back on him. To the clinch again. Both fighters very active in the clinch. Cooper talked to us about framing out of the clinch. We haven't seen any framing from Cooper. What we've seen is a barrage of punches. Why frame out when I can punch this guy? 
to the clinch again. Underhook now from Cooper. Good driving pressure from Cooper, putting Michael Lales back against the ropes. And look at this, both guys very accurate with their clinch right here. 96% to 84, both guys doing a lot of good work in there. So Collins keeping this fight moving, and now Collins calls time. This will be a medical timeout. Dr. Don Muzi, Chief Medical Officer of BKFC. Hopefully that's not in a place where they think the blood's going to get in his eye too much and they can let the fight keep going. There we go. This fight will continue. Dr. Muzi, in conjunction with the outstanding ringside cage side physicians here supplied by the South Carolina Commission. 105 remaining round number two. And Sean, you hear the crowd just fired up for the fighters right now. Wanting this fight to continue. I think it's a great one. The fighters continuing to find success, landing body and head in the clinch. In the center circle, forward pressure now for Michael Lale. Cooper's done a really good job moving backwards, exploding forward. Lale's done a really good job of just exploding forward off the front foot. But he's not been heavy on the front foot as he told us he's worked hard to do. From the back foot in the right hand lands Michael Lale. Cooper doing a good job of laying that jab, and that's doing a lot of damage. With pressure again, off the jab into the clinch goes Lale. Cooper on the underhook. Cooper's been really effective, Chris, with the underhooks and the overhooks. You wouldn't think this was his first bare knuckle fight. He seems very comfortable out there. Lale on the right hand entry. Now on the counter shot. Half time plump snatched by Cooper. Lale to the body. I feel like Lale has a sense of urgency right now with the cuts. That ends round number two. Sean, this is a great free view we're having right now. Both <laughs> these fights have been fantastic. Cutman extraordinaire, Pat McPherson, going to work under that left eye of Michael Lale. Sorry. Breathe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Right. What you want, one, two? Just lead with the two. Lead with the two. To the head, to the body you want. Go to the head first. Then if you don't want, go to the body. The head. All you're going to have to do is catch him one or two. He busted all up. All right, Come breathe, on, breathe in, look, Curtis, Good. you always want to make breathe, 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 blow it out. And here, breathe. he's showing some blow of the out. inside work, good right hand, good it. left hand, by like Cooper bad. right there. These guys are Lead really doing it. some good inside work. Hard right hand, I mean, Cooper just walked right through it. These guys are both tough as nails. And I like what Cooper's coach is saying right there. He's saying that right hand lead. They feel that he is much faster than his opponent. If you're going to do that right hand lead, you better be faster. It's an every now and again punch. You can't throw it consistently or you're going to get caught. All right, the line, Red. the line, Blue. Set for round number three. Top keeper. All right, guys, double up. Forward pressure off of scratch immediately for Michael Lale, and there's the counter exploding in for Daniel Cooper. That right there, microcosm is the theme of this fight. You see how that's ruled, and that's ruled a slip immediately by Jason Collins. Turn, guys. Up. Again off the jack, counter right hand. Between rounds, you heard Cooper's corner calling for that two. There was the two right there. To the clinch, left hand. And uh, another good percentage. These are just total strikes. Both guys landed 82 and 62. These guys are going at it. Good right hook to the body, right hook to the head from Cooper. I love what Cooper did there. He threw to the body and then right to the head. Beautiful work. Cooper driving pressure again on the overhook from Daniel Cooper. Lale continuing the throw to the body. These two fighters have been tireless in the clinch. Separation again from Jason Collins. Come here, turn, turn. Come Fighters in the center circle. Lale coming forward in the center circle. Left hook from Cooper. Lale walked through it. 55 seconds remaining, round number three. On the level change from Daniel Cooper. Straight one, two, straight two, right back from Cooper after Lale landed. Which again on the underhook. Left to the body from Michael Lale. Lale just coming straight forward the entire time. He's got to be careful with that. He's going to get counted. Nice jab from Cooper. Lale walked right into that punch and indeed walked right through that punch. Cooper keeps looking over here in his corner. You can see we got Lorenzo Hunt over there. You got to be careful just watching the corner too much. Of On the right hand, left hand. Shuts to the body now for Cooper into the clinch. Hard overhook snatched by Lale. 
Closing seconds, round number three. On the reset, forward again is Michael Lell. There is the bell. We move to round four. And although Lell's face is a bloody mess right now, I mean, Cooper's looking really tired at this round. point. It might be we're that forward pressure it. the entire hey, time from Lell. We won this round. After a few cleans, he's done. Eh? Feign that jab, jab, jab two, One jab, jab two, one. three. I need you to put two, three punches together. He's right there. The only reason we cannot connect because we finish it on top of him. He go, take him over the uppercut. I can throw my jab and he's gonna leave, put his head down there. I can throw the uppercut. One or two punches, this motherfucker's still good. All right, breathe. Breathe. Let's get this shit out of here. Get him out of here. All right, he's tough motherfucker. Let's get him out of here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Right. Blow. Breath, blow out. Sean, I really felt down and blow out. Stretch of that last round right there. Felt like Cooper was really slowing down. He's really 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 gonna have to really pull it together right now because Lale is coming right now. He's coming forward the entire time, pushing the pace. All right, gentlemen. Cooper might want to get on his bike or land some hard shots. One to two. Round number four underway. Oh, coming forward, there's the right hand, counter right hand, another right hand on the inside from Cooper. Well, he'll take those punches exceedingly well. Cooper keeps looking down at his right hand. Oh. On this step in jab. A little reaction from this Columbia, South Carolina crowd. And look at just that forward pressure the entire time from Lowe coming straight forward. Hell on the overhook. Knuckle up! Well, continuing to come forward as he's done throughout this fight. Good head movement from Daniel Cooper. Good jab from Daniel Cooper. Cooper on his back foot, circling out. Some heavy breathing, though, on the back pedal, on the circling up from Cooper. 70 seconds remaining, round number four. On the right hand, good left hand on the entry from Lale. Underhook from Daniel Cooper. Cooper to the body. Left uppercut to the sternum from Michael Lale. Lale again to the body with the left hand. And Sean, that inside fighting is so grueling, so tiring right there. It's really sad. No, no, the overhook now from Daniel Cooper. Separation from referee Jason Collins. 45 seconds remaining, round four. You see the heavy breathing on the outside from Cooper. We're now holding center circle. Lale resetting, coming forward once more. 30 seconds remaining in the fourth round. Cooper's mouth is wide open. Another sign of his exhaustion right there. Gotta Stop. keep that mouth right. closed. You don't want to get hit and eat your jaw broken. Okay. Don't go up. This has been a high-paced, light heavyweight fight. Nothing decided yet. Very even to this point between Michael Lale and Daniel Cooper. Hard Stop. overhook snatched right. again by Cooper. Right. Come on, guys. Don't go up. Fighters looking to land one more shot before the bell. More than that from Cooper. Lands the flurry to the head. We move to the fifth and final round. Sean, I know it doesn't seem like it. Only two minutes, people think you can do anything for two minutes. Not so much. When you're in there and you're grinding like that, those inside fighting moments right there that really make you tired. We're good. These guys are exhausted, but they're still fighting. Right, yeah. Blow him out. Look at here, Coop. When he comes in, all you gotta do is pop his ass with that right hand. He's gonna run right into it. Yes, sir. And then when he shoves up, pop! Oh, all right. Huh? My right hand sliding it off. Sliding off? Yeah. Sliding off his face? Yeah. So, listen, listen left. Boom, and out. All right. When he's here, you got to throw an uppercut. You got to, baby. All right. When he How about looking on the scorecard? You win. You win. Like you gotta stay, get, quit taking them free little fuck. I love the corner work right there for Cooper. He said, my right hand is sliding. He's sliding right off his face. I love it. But great advice. He said, we need to throw the uppercut when your opponent has his head down. I like the uppercut. I'm moving outside and limit the body. One of those two. The KFC founder and CEO, David Feldman, always tells Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debuters make an impact. Michael Lale and Daniel Cooper have most definitely made an impact through four rounds. Medical timeout called by referee Jason Collins before we start round number five. I think you're looking at that left eye. It's almost swollen shut right there for Lale. Open his left eye. You see Dr. Don Muzi. He's known as in every event. Chief medical officer of BKFC. And an anticlimactic ending to an otherwise phenomenal fight. 
Medical stoppage, TKO, and the win for Daniel Cooper. That's so unfortunate, Sean. Those guys were having a great fight right there, but they felt he could not see, I believe, is why they did that. And they're always looking out for the, the safety of the fighter. I have no problem with it. If Don Muzi says the fight needs to be stopped, I believe him. We'll officially go down as two on, minutes of round tonight. number four. Up by three times tonight. Round number five did not start. Oh, it ain't now. And that's class from game, Daniel man. Cooper. No Shit, histrionics no in the celebration. He fought oh, extremely it. well, as Shoot. did Michael Lale. Yeah. The medical stoppage, yeah. the physician stoppage. No more now. And after a first-class performance in his hey, BKFC wait, debut, that's a first-class yeah, reaction to a win by physician stoppage from Daniel Cooper. And, and Sean Cooper was nothing short of phenomenal this whole week. Just happy the entire time. Every time I saw him, he was happy and smiling. Um, I would expect another day. A great attitude. Happy for him. I, I mean, don't like what happened to Larry. I mean, it was a great fight. Both guys showed a lot, a lot in that to me. I'd love to see both these guys fight again. But, man, what a performance. See the respect between these two fighters. There was zero animosity entering, and obviously zero animosity exiting. Quality fight. Here is Jeff Houston. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, on the advice of our ringside physician, our referee in charge, Jason Collins steps in, calling a stop to the fight at the conclusion of round number four. For your winner by TKO, Daniel Super Cooper. And Sean, what a debut. A lot of times we have guys their first time in there, and it looks like their first time. That was not the case here. Cooper looked like a seasoned veteran. Daniel Cooper? Ironically, talked about being a mover throughout his career as a pro MMA and Muay Thai fighter, wanting to be more stationary in his BKFC debut. But Cooper's movement was outstanding. From the outside, repeatedly exploding in. Both fighters effective throughout, especially in the clinch. And the physician stoppage, the issue with the eye. The winner by way of fourth round TKO, Daniel Cooper defeats Michael Lale. To the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Folks, coming up in November, what a month. It is going to be a fairly international month all the way through. BKFC November 3rd, it's going to be in Orlando. November 4th in Thailand, Bukau, Senshai, Bulgaria. Yes, making the debut in Europe the 17th and on the 18th. Going to be right back to the UK, Danny Christie and Jared Warren. What an incredible month it'll be. We are hitting everywhere on the globe here at the bare knuckle fighting championship it's about to go down top of the hour get to the bkfc app where you can see this incredible full main card we'll see you at the top Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all new library of content, including behind the scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. 
tonight only. You'll receive 20% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship apparel when you use the promo code BKFC52 at BareKnuckleShop.com. There's a huge selection of hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. So place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, you can use promo code BKFC52 at checkout to get 20% off BKFC apparel. So knuckle up and save. That's my bell now. I want it. Oh. 